Okay. Well, Very good morning, everyone, for joining this session. Uh, I am Supriya. I represent Global SDG 7 Hubs, an initiative of Selco Foundation, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. Uh, today, we are here to discuss on enhancing the millet value chain uh, and how do we like look at the sustainable livelihoods and climate resilience. Uh, without further delay, I would like to just set the context and then, uh, you know, there'll be opening remarks and then there is a short video that is being played. And then we have knowledge sharing session. Uh, where we will hear a lot from esteemed scientists from International International Center for Biosaline Agriculture, uh, Dr. Srinivasan, uh, Dr. Jitendra Ji, and then we have uh, Ms. Rucha Limay, senior analyst from Selco Foundation, who will be sharing uh, a lot of insights on the millet value chain work that has been done in India and across the globe from, uh, you know, ICBA. Um, so without further delay, I would request uh, uh, Head of Crop Diversity and Genetics from ICBA to give us the opening remarks. And then we have a Director Masuda Jafar from Selco Foundation to set the context and give us the opening remarks as well for the session. Thank you. Thank you, Supriya. Thank you, Supriya. I'm R.K. Singh. I'm a program leader here in the ICBA, program leader for the Crop Diversity Vision and Genetics section. And this is a very right moment to start this webinar because this is a good platform to do our you know knowledge extension and knowledge hub when we talk about the millets you know sustainable agriculture comes into the picture and when we say that sustainable agriculture it means it's a climate positive solution and we are talking about all the climate change and those things but in case if you think of climate change and the sustainable agriculture and a climate positive solution food system our food system is a major culprit for the climate change why because everybody wants to grow rice wheat maize and potato and they have the highest carbon footprints if you compare that as you are talking like in the, our discussion the carbon footprints by the rice it's around 4 kg of the carbon dioxide emission for the 1 kg of rice production while in the millets it's only 0.3 kg so it's like 13 times less carbon footprints so this is the major culprit system and millets are called that's why the climate is smart and best bet approach for the sustainable agriculture because this is not only the climate is smart but they are nutrient rich they are best bet solution the consume relatively with the they they, they can be grown with the less resources and can be stored for a long time not unlike other uh, staple crops but the why we are pushing the millet why we are having the international year of millet just to push them in the adoption chain and adoption is a really challenge due to people's awareness on their uses and that's the thing that value chain is very critical point when we have to talk about the adoption at the large scale so when we should talk about the adoption at the large scale it means the women come to the picture the gender come to the picture and this is they play a very important role for the adoption of that that's why we are having the topics on today's webinar in the research as well as on the women roles on that one and this is the webinar which is befitting the need of the hour and on behalf of ICBA, i welcome all the participants to this webinar and congratulate organizers for arranging this webinar on enhancing millet value chain for sustainable livelihood and climate resilience so I can say that this is the right time to have this webinar and it's a befitting to have this webinar considering the, the climate change. When we are talking about the business as usual, it means we are not getting, getting the, the goal of the SDGs. We are going to like having the warmer planet and that should not be the case. So millets can save that particularly our and they can we can meet the SDG goals by 2030 which is envisaged but in this one millet can play a very very important role but the again the value chain because if the value chain is not there then many people I have seen they can grow the millets they say that what next and that's the big question mark on the millets adoption so adoption is very well taken up Inless, unless you know you should have the good value chain and value addition products and the women is, they play very, very big role on that one so i congratulate again organizers for arranging, arranging this webinar 
on enhancing millet value chain for sustainable livelihood and climate resilience and thanks to giving me this opportunity to the part of the event thank you very much thank you so much dr rakesh ji for that uh, valuable insights on millets and especially the role of women in uh, millets and also giving insights on the carbon footprint of other commercial crops that have that are dominating the uh, you know uh, globe in the agriculture space uh, thanks for that now i request ms huda jaffer from selco foundation director uh, 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 to give us insights and you know set the context for the webinar thank you so much thank you supriya uh, thanks so much dr rakesh kumar ji uh, for opening that session i think already there has been a very clear understanding and linkage to millets from a people and planet perspective i think at given the pace at which uh, and the urgency with which we need to act today uh, moving over our production and consumption systems to a millet based system uh, can have multifold impacts and i think you see more of that on the ground as well uh, but in order to do that i think today the partnership with ikba uh, and selco foundation and you know global sdg7 hubs is really wanting to get into the how like how do we make this happen right and one of the approaches that we take very critically and we will expand on that during the session as well is how do you look at a complete value chain approach you know right from your production systems all the way to ensuring that consumption patterns are actually moving and shifting i think as dr rakesh said if we are used to consuming in a certain way you know no matter how much you promote production things will not fully change right so how do you make sure that you treat millets as a sector but completely look at the end to end you know ensure that we are not only propagating production systems stabilizing production systems but also ensure that on the consumption side the the recipe side the value addition side uh, there is a significant upgradation as well right so the way in which we've looked at it is you know right from your on farm needs uh, to ensuring that drudgery reduction happens to ensuring that we have you know secure a uh, processing systems on farm uh, post harvest processing systems including the primary secondary and the value addition processing systems how do you make sure that it can cater to local demands as well as beyond local needs as also so these are issues that we have been working on Uh, there are five aspects that i wanted to quickly touch upon in the opening before you go deeper into the session today uh, one of it is definitely on the technology side so please do approach as irrespective of where in the world you are based out of and if you are facing challenges on the technical aspects of meeting certain millet value chain issues the technology innovation technology supply chain making sure that there's servicing for the appropriate technology to enhance millets that is one part that we would be very keen on working with the participants on the group the second piece would be how do we shift the financing mechanisms and models to promote millets you know providing better financing for post harvest for production for market linkages of millets a working capital for millet farmers how do you sort of promote the financing piece uh, you know companies that are doing packaging and Uh, of millets and value addition of millets how do you ensure that the right finance goes to them these are, that's the second piece that we are most interested in um third and most critical piece is to partner with the participants on the on the webinar today and really look at learnings on how do you do market linkages right how do you start production and ensure that it's meeting demand how do you consume how do you make sure that consumption systems are shifting right that's the third piece the fourth piece is primarily on linking to government policies and uh, you know looking at what is the policy infrastructure that is needed uh, better incentives better subsidies uh, to ensure that millet farmers and millet production systems are able to access those programs uh, like for example in india for example we actually have something called a millet mission it's not only a national mission but every state has a specific millet mission and targets around millets so that the right subsidies and the policy framework is there in in the states and in the country so the fourth and the most critical piece is on the policy side and the government integration side and last and i think again something that underlies all of these aspects of technology finance policy and market linkages is the capacity building so irrespective of the needs for capacity building or production units of producers of uh, sellers of small enterprises in millets these are things which you know any kind of capacity building that is needed please feel free to reach out to the organizers and we would be very happy and interested to partner and to facilitate capacity building programs moving forward this is not a one time webinar i think i just want to underscore that this is um you know we are in this with practitioners and we are in it for a long term so we are not 
you know, this is a series, it will be continued. So we look forward to working with you. Thank you so much and looking forward to taking things forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hudama, uh, for that insights, uh, especially, uh, you know, touching upon the whole ecosystem aspects of the millet, right from the market linkage, importance of end-to-end, -end, you know, aspects of the millet value chain, looking at the consumption pattern, finance, and policies. Thank you so much for that insightful, uh, you know, opening remarks. Uh, now, I, I would request uh, our IPA partners to play a short video on uh, millet work. Uh, so, this is basically a millet work that has happened in India, especially in the remote geographies where there is, you know, high concentration of millet production and how Selco Foundation has been, you know, working across these geographies and with the communities with a different approach. I mean, where we take a community-based approach to uh, demonstrate the millet, uh, you know, post-harvest solutions with the community. Uh, so now I request the host to play the video. Millet is one of the coarse grain cereal which is extensively grown across the globe. It is also most primitively grown in, in case of, you know, it is only cultivated by tribal populations. It is not much common to mainstream as in case of rice and uh, wheat. It is one of the climate resilient crop which can withstand extreme climatic conditions. It is also one of the major staple food crop across majority of the population in India. So millets also contributes towards reducing the carbon footprints when it compared with other commercial crops such as rice and sugarcane which is high water intensive and also you know high resource input intensive crops. So what is ClickUp? ClickUp is an all-in-one productivity software where you can manage everything and anything. Millets were out of market mainly due to the lack of technology required for processing them. But now when we are facing the larger challenges like climate change, water scarcity and malnutrition. Our focus is shifting back to bring the millets back into the local diets and to do that, the efficient technology is the must. Even though the technology is available, the another challenge is reliable source of power at decentralized level. Selco Foundation stands at bridging this very gap by providing technology and reliable source of energy at a decentralized level. Selco teams, as and when required, visits the site to do the assessment to understand the exact requirement of the millet processing unit. The team helps you in making the financial models, selection of technology and linking you with the financial institutes to get the loan for your successful enterprise. We have to go to the city of 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 the the जे एटा आपण जानिथि बे आदिवासी अंचल रो मांडिया कांगु जोना सुवा जेति सब मिलेट थिला एटे थिला तांकर पारंपरिक चासा और पारंपरिक खाद्य ए खाद्य क्रमागत भाबरे जेते बले दिन थिला लोक एटो खाइ बंचतले काहे कि आर संरक्षण बेसि दिन पर्यंत 15 Dominated area rohuji. Athi amar electrification problem rohuji. Sethi pani amko three phase electricity milani. Se processing unit ko establish kariya ko. To kichhi jaga ame pilot basis re nahi chulo. Jodi ki ame silko soi to gote agreement kora hai thila. Silka pondesh na orat tra nau kheel kanda ga. Aur jote na wo birto aur tra kheel kanda ga. Iriti halli ke bada tundre akti desar. Iriti mart kodga konta kheel daga. Aur sumaro vandu tingle ka aur kasa saata tawagi prayatna potto. Yeh halli ke tando install mari dera. Aur time vandu vandu kalu tingle thakandi dae. Na vili kokkabare village na na salak mari lili na iga 
ಎರಡು ಥರ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮನ್ನು ಹಾಕಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಒಂದು ಡಿ ಸ್ಟೋನರು ಮತ್ತು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಪುಲ್ವೈಜರ್ ಎರಡು ಥರ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಹಾಕಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಜನ ಯಾವ ಥರ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂತಂದರೆ ರಾಗಿಯನ್ನು ಬೆ ತಾವೇ ಬಿತ್ತನೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಬೆಳೀತಾರೆ ಬೆಳೆದಂಥ ರಾಗಿಯನ್ನು ತಮ್ಮ ಮನೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ Thank you so much for that video and we can actually it's a detailed video where we explain about different aspects of value addition and processing that happens within the millet value chain uh, where we can share the link with the audiences to uh, you know refer to it later uh, because of the time constraint we are just uh, stopping the video here and uh, it, it it gives us the idea of how remote regions suffer actually because of the lack of you know proper infrastructure especially for post harvest processing in millets uh, so how selco foundation has been working with a lot of grassroots partners like like wasin uh, to demonstrate post harvest processing and also we have been now looking at a larger program on how we can enhance this uh, you know post harvest processing through capacity building programs as well so with that without further delay i would like to go on to the next session on the knowledge sharing uh, uh, sessions uh, where we have um, dr uh, shrinivas uh, samineni from ikpa uh, a plant breeder for halophytes jump plasm enhancement ikpa uh, to share his in depth knowledge on millet research that is happening at ikpa so now i would request uh, dr shrinivas sir to uh, start the presentation and take the okay uh, thank you supriya so uh, no you want to share or you let me share the screen Uh, yes, Dr. Sirini, you can share your screen. Okay. Are you able to see? Yes. Uh, is my voice audible? Uh, it's audible, but can we make it a full screen? Uh, it's basically in a slide mode. Uh, can you put it into a slideshow mode? Is it okay now? Uh, no, we can still uh, not able to see it in a full screen mode. Meanwhile I request audience if they have any particular questions you can drop your questions in the chat box or after every session we have few minutes uh, dedicated for questions and answers so you can pitch your questions then is it fine now uh no sir so if you go into the right bottom corner uh, if you click on there then it will be a full screen um full oh, just a second yeah, yeah. full screen you are not seeing just select the screen when you are sharing select the screen which is the full screen one this one yeah start the slideshow first uh but it's okay i think it's visible even if you want to just start uh, that should be fine i think it's visible in fact the font size is visible ah uh. you can start with that one yeah. only yeah yeah oh now it is okay no no it's okay but uh, it's not okay but you know you start with the same thing otherwise we are okay. losing the Oh, okay. 
Yeah, please go back to the first slide and we can proceed. That's fine. Yeah, yes. yeah. Go back to the first slide and leave it. Yes. Yeah. Go back to the first slide, please. Oh, okay. Okay. You can hear me now, huh? Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry for the delay. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, myself, Srinivasan. I'm working as a plant breeder, mainly on the quinoa and also other crops like uh, the small millets and uh, some other legume crops I work. So, recently we started, I um, mean, Igba has been working on the millet for a long time, especially on the adaptation point of view, how their suitability in the MENA region. But recently, uh, we started working on uh, the small millet components and slowly moving towards the so and pillar millet, which are the major millets. Uh, so we work in a crop diverse question and genetics team headed by Dr. R. K. Singh. And um, what the uh, work we did in the past two years, I'm going to present, like giving a little bit contest uh, about why we need to grow here and uh, their suitability uh, at UAE growing condition. So these are the basic things I think everybody knows just to touch upon like why we are growing, why these uh, things are important at uh, the uh, UAE region or the Middle East region because the, these conditions are very harsh here, not like uh, many uh, major food crops grow here. Uh, because these crops have very good uh, water efficiency and uh, can be adapted to high uh, temperatures and drought conditions prevail here along with the salinity is a major challenge here. And uh, availability of the fodder is the main thing here for the uh, animals to grow, uh, especially for the camels or the cows and uh, the buffaloes they grow here. So uh, these millets provide all these food and uh, fodder and uh, the nutritional security for that one. And uh, you know that they have low GI and these are gluten free and each millet has a different uh, nutrient beneficiary th kind of thing like a high calcium in uh, finger millet, iron in uh, pearl millet and sorghum biofortification is very much uh, 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 imperative in many of these uh, millets especially they have biofortified pearl millet and sorghum have been available for consumption and uh, most of the thing is we use less pesticides in these uh, millet crops so that it have very less uh, negative impact on the environment and uh, one more important thing is under our UAE and MENA region conditions we can take uh, because of this uh, low maturity time like they take maybe proso millet takes 60 days and foxtail millet takes around 90 days so we can take two crops minimum during an year and if possible three crops also we can take uh, so if you see the our UAE contest, so why we are growing here in our uh, research station means because UAE most of the food material is uh, being imported from other countries. And uh, it has now want to like as per the national food security strategy of the UAE, they want to be like in the top 10 list of the um, global food security index uh, soon. So they are trying and they took different initiatives, especially like uh, to enhance the local food production and using different new technologies in the agriculture uh, production uh, point of view. So uh, our main emphasis is to uh, align with those uh, initiatives done by the National Food Security Strategy of the UAE. Uh, and also to see if you see the UAE, it imports a lot of millets and sorghum, like this is a recent statistics from FAA, so more than 20,000 tons of millets and 9,000 tons of sorghum it has imported. And uh, fourth, largest importer of millets is the UAE. So globally, you can see that one. And you may also think that, OK, uh, UAE imports a lot of uh, other foods also. Why this is interesting? The interesting thing is the our research, what we did at uh, IGBA, found that the millet crops, what we grow, like as uh, mentioned by Supriya and our uh, the, the speakers earlier, uh, that these have the good adaptability for our uh, local growing conditions because we are growing crops in 98% of the sand. 
So you don't get like uh, whatever the yields you are getting everywhere reported in the FEO are from the good soils like uh, uh, having good clay or loam content. But here 98% is sand and remaining one or two percent is clay, uh, silt and other components. So literally organic content is very less. We want to get out something from this one. So if you see, these are the value addition components, why, what we can eat uh, as uh, Supriya and other mentioned that, okay, we can make a good value chain because unless we have a value chain, so we can't uh, promote any crop uh, further, especially in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, millets where we have uh, challenges in the processing and the value addition component. So if you see our IGBA, we have a gene bank and we store, uh, we collect a lot of uh, millet uh, germplasm from different institutes and we store more than six, uh, 700 uh, germplasm from uh, di di different millet crops like well millet, sorghum, foxtail, proso and barnyard millet. And we also share the material with the global uh, countries, researchers, whoever want like more than 700 have been shared with the different countries and these lines, not only the sharing, we tested at different locations for their suitability. So earlier was screening itself, like, okay, if you grow the foxtail millet, whether uh, which way it will grow, whether it will grow or not, it will set the seed or not when you grow in the sand. And our previous results were very encouraging. And now in the past two years, we have been working to mainstream these activities, like to push more millets into the system so that we can get good uh, varieties of what, out of it and we can promote the millet cultivation in that one. So in that view, so we started uh, like developing early maturing varieties and also develop suitable agronomic practices where our agronomists are working on this one. So our strategies mainly involve mutation breeding and pure line selection. Uh, and this is the research component, what we did like uh, foxtail millet, uh, we want to develop some good uh, breeding lines in this for promotion in the MENA region. So from the germplasm lines, we made selections and we self for three generation and we identified like uh, 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 good genotypes we call that the pure lines and uh, those pure lines after selfing. So we started multiplying them in a uh, big areas uh, around the 300 square meters areas. And we developed those things and we try to characterize those things. So these are, these are the now, now uh, pure lines. Uh, you can find like uh, purity in those lines. And these we tested to see how their performance was because the germplasm lines, we can't test them directly because it involves a lot of uh, uh, variation in the seed and color, all the phenotypic traits. So on the right side, what you are seeing is where we did like seed production in the summer season during this year, you can see the, the transplanted and we grow the nursery. So this is the characterization. What we did was like how the genotypes, these perform under our harsh conditions. So the maturity plant height is the variable and biomass, 100 seed bite and the panicle height and the number of panicles, how much they can produce uh, per, uh, per each uh, plant. So all the information we collected when uh, we are now in a position uh, to see, evaluate the yields. These are the yields actually after developing, so we tested under like just before the summer conditions. If you can see, these are the blue and uh, other two colors where we have grown these uh, 12 genotypes under different conditions like uh, fresh water, like means full irrigation based on the crop coefficient uh, uh, data. So we identified how much water we need to give and we reduced to 50% irrigation, the second treatment and third one is the salinity, which are very small bars you can see here. So we tested during uh, February to June this year under field conditions. So you can see the pretty much the fresh water has a very good uh, uh, yield, uh, yield given more than 1.5 ton per hectare. And similarly, because we don't want to give that much water, so we reduce the 50%. So many genotypes almost gave like almost similar to the some uh, similar to the fresh water at 100% of irrigation the given. So in this way, we could identify some lines with very less or no effect on the moisture stress. So these genotypes we can uh, grow at even. Uh, 1500 to um, 150 to 180 millimeter of uh, water per season. So that is the beauty. But if you see the salinity, we grown at the 10 decimal seems very harsh on the growth and the yield. But the good thing here is that it was not affecting the flowering. 
so they produce some seed, but it's not uh, sufficient because the tender system has become very high for them. So these are the lines which I was talking about where in collaboration with Celco, we conducted some millet demo farm uh, last yeah. December. And uh, this is the cultivation actually, how good the, the crop is growing. And uh, Sel, uh, Supri, uh, Supriya and uh, her colleagues came here and demonstrated the machines here. And uh, they have seen how they grow here. The, the cultivation was very good. And uh, similarly, not only the pure line selection, as I mentioned, our strategies use the mutation breeding. So we sent the seed to Vienna. So for the um, uh, gamma irradiation and uh, in the pipeline after this, we have a series of lines coming up uh, where with the mutation also, because this is self-pollinated crop crossing is very difficult. So we use the mutation uh, uh, treatment to develop the lines in this direction. So the next step is, okay, we are good now in UAE, they are growing fine. So we want to expand this cultivation of these breeding lines, their suitability, adaptability to other uh, Emirates in the UAE. So this is planned in this current season so that uh, we will have a pretty idea about the material and uh, whether uh, the which line is doing good, which line is adapting to which uh, area. So from this experiment, like what we are doing, so what we can offer from this foxtail millet at the Iqbari says, so it can grow with a minimum irrigation or 250 millimeter water. And it could, uh, if the, anybody wants to have a commercial angle. So the research also found out that uh, it could replace 100% corn when you feed the chickens also. So pesticides we don't use at all here. Very, I think I have not used uh, in our two years of the experiment. So they can be targeted as an organic feed markets. So it can be uh, used as a hay in many countries. It is used as a hay uh, for the animals. So it is a uh, good in that sense where you have a food shortage and quickly in 60 days, um, 50 days, you can get a good hay in this one. So commercial point of view can have the grain can be used for the vinegar production and uh, good for the uh, individual having the diabetes because it has a good amount of uh, resistant starch and you have a diverse utilization as you can see in the previous slide. So this is how it looked like uh, our foxtail millet cultivation under the top uh, left uh, uh, side is like on the fresh water and below is the 50% irrigation. So the growth is almost similar even if you reduce the water significantly because we gave little high water 500 and 320 millimeter because it was a summer. So that's why we gave a little more water but salinity is affected drastically. So in the sorghum still uh, we have not analyzed the data but I'm just showing the crop growth is very good here during the normal season. Normal season means November to uh, uh, October, November, December, January, February, March. These three, uh, six months is very good for cultivation of any crop. You get very good yields. So next coming to the another crop, we were in uh, the pipeline or the proso millet, the same kind of experiment we did for the uh, proso millet also. Uh, we identified some 24 lines and purified those lines, actually tested under during normal season last year and the summer season this year. And uh, very good adaptability of several lines in the normal season, you can see uh, even uh, of course, we are not much interested in the fresh water. If you give water, always it grows. But we were interested in when you reduce the water to 50%, so doubt stays imposed. And we want to check because as much water is very precious here in the UAE and MENA region. So we want to use the less water and get the more out of the grain from that one. So we got good uh, lines identified from the prosomylate, both normal and summer season. Summer season become very harsh for the both because we imported temperature, drought stress together on the line. So it was very, very, very drastic on the growth of the crop during growing in the summer. So still we could be able to identify some lines uh, which are like 800 kg are giving compared to the normal thing. But I need to check these uh, results for confirmation whether the true potential is there or not. So this is the seed processing facility uh, where in the uh, collaboration with the Selco Foundation, they are kind, uh, they have provided these machines uh, uh, to the IGBA last year and uh, we are very thankful to them. And uh, we started using 
doing these things and uh, the uh, representatives from Selco last year, they demonstrated these uh, to the different stakeholders here during the millet demo form. And uh, we will really appreciate it. And what we can offer from the IGBA side, like, okay, because we currently started working on the foxtail millet and prosu millet, we are in the next day. So finger millet is coming up. We made the selections. We have now pure lines available. The testing is being done. And, uh, the, uh, and also from the coming two years, we will be able to get some lines in sorghum and pellimented. So we uh, received some lines from the ICRISAT, uh, from the pellimented, and also sorghum, what we have from the gene bank with the Dr. Shahidi. So he provided good lines. So we are testing. So coming two to three years, we will be able to give some lines suitable for the MENA region at least, uh, and after testing. So we can provide uh, our uh, capacity development activities with different partners and we can uh, collaborate with NARS to promote millet cultivation. And we have small seed samples available for the foxtail millet for currently. And uh, this is like our research team, it's not only me. So other people also really contributed uh, to this research uh, from crop modeling, plant genetic resources, agronomy, and the gene bank and our technicians. And uh, thank you, our IGBA manager team and uh, Selco Foundation for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Srinivas Ji, for that uh, you know intense uh, presentation, especially on the work that is happening across the millets and uh, showing us how really the millets perform in you know such a harsh conditions like salinity and arid climatic conditions. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, insightful presentation. Uh, now I request uh, Dr. Jitendra Ji to present on the role of women in millet value chain. Uh, so I would request if the audience have any questions, you can uh, put it in the chat box um, and then we can take it in the Q&A session. But we have a comment from the audience saying that it's an excellent effort by Iqbal on millets on sustainability research. Uh, finger millets has inherent ability of salinity tolerance. Is there any efforts on this crop? Uh, before going on to this session, I would request uh, Dr. Srinivas, maybe if you can just uh, throw some, uh, you know, points on this uh, question. Ah, uh, uh, yes, thank you for the question. So the finger minute, we agree that one, but uh, the current situation is like, we don't have any like uh, varieties or pure lines to develop whatever the finger minute are the, from the germplasm lines. So like in other proso millet and the foxtail millet, what we did, we are trying to develop the pure lines from those things. Uh, then we try to, because earlier we evaluated, we found like a very good yields uh, of uh, um, this finger millet. But uh, after purification, we get good lines so that uh, it would be uh, interesting to see uh, when you grow a pure line rather than the mixture of the germplasm lines. So definitely we, we are very much interested to focus on the uh, foxtail millet. So that experiment we are, uh, we are conducting currently. Thank you, Dr. Srinivas uh, If there are any further questions, I request audience to put it in the chat box. And now we go on to the next session by Dr. Jitendra Prakash Ji on role of women in millet Valley. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Can you see the slide? Yes, yes. It's clearly okay. uh, visible and audible. Sir. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good morning once again. I'm Jitendra. I'm an economist here in Iqbal. So... I just want to talk something about the role of women in the millet value chains. And this is one of the crucial topic because when you delay about the sustainable livelihoods and the climate resilience in, in the globe, the participation of men and women and the equality on that one is very crucial. And especially in millet, I focus on this because we can see that there are certain facts now the big you know, packs, like by 2025, it is estimated that the market for millet may get into the size of like 12 billion US dollar or that worth. It is predicted by global market insight. And also India and Nigeria are the biggest or largest producers, almost they might control 80% of the share in the market. 
So this is, this is the situation. And both of these countries are developing countries in some sense. So we need to know what are the roles of women in the millet value chain and what are their roles at each level of value chains? Do we have them in all levels or we are just uh, having women in the primary roles or the basic roles in the production systems? And why it is crucial to understand the women's role in value chain? And what is the framework that we, we are missing or what we need to do uh, when we study the role of women in value chain? These are the issues we may discuss today. The basic thing, what are the role of women in the millet value chains? Because I'm not going to say anything about what are the climate adoption issues or you know, other values of uh, millet in this case, but we just focus on, you know, there are different steps in the value chains. It may be on the input supply, production, transport, processing, retailing or marketing, and even consumption. But now we also have the post-consumption issues, but we left for that one uh, for the certain you know, of time. But if you see in these all steps, what is the major role played by women? And we can see from all these you know, previous studies and the existing studies that you know, in some of the societies, selecting suitable variety and managing some of the irrigations, those things are, you know, certain percentage shared by women, maybe in the tilling or preparing some of the things, but most of the things are still, you know, controlled by men. This is what this study says, but the dynamics is really changing. Gender dynamics is not like what we had 10 years before or when we had during the period of the Green Revolution. But you know, this is changing, we all agree with that. And there is a positive change on that one. And especially in case of millet, we all see there is a positive change and the women are playing major roles while you know, controlling the seeds and then you know, selections and preparation, those things. But we all see because it is still like in some of the activities, some of the activities in production and then local you know, market management or local stories, and partially in the local transportation, so women are heavily involved. But you know, when we talk about the, you know, the, in, you go out of the domestic market in the value chain, the bigger value chains, there, there may be still, you know, less role uh, played by women. This is what we, we usually observe in, in the bigger markets. But this is not only the case in the millet. This is also the case in rice wheat which has been, you know, in the market for a long time and which has been, you know, supported by the government in several, several countries like in India uh, and other countries. But it's still, you know, in that value chain also, the major crops, which are established crops, commercial crops also. Yeah, the role of women is still, you know, in the, in the primitive sites, not in the bigger sites. So th this is what we need to understand while we talk about the millet's value chain, because this is still a new one uh, at a commercial stage or at this stage of different value chains, moving from subsistence production to the commercial production. So we need to think on that one. And we also have the other points like, you know, threshing, winnowing, curing, and drying. These are the processing issues which are still difficult and then not it you know, highly mechanized in most of the societies. So we, we have like, you know, the primitive works, the basic works are done by women. This is what we see from the present, you know, uh, situation of the, you know, value chain. And also the retailing and marketing. In this one also the farm gate and local middlemen are involved and they are, you know, in, in, in the process that they negotiate with the women farmers and they, they have some something to sell, something to market on. But, you know, when you go to the, major markets, big decisions, selling at the big markets, and then, you know, putting into the transporting system and those things, that that is a sale in the domain of men, not because, you know, it is, it is discriminatory, but because it was, you know, by, by the rice fields, by some of the things. So in case of consumption, we have both, but it's still, you know, uh, who shares these things are still not it is studied very well. And the next one is like, what are the role of women in the millet value chain? And why this is so? Because we usually see this is not only in the millet value chain. This is in the value chain of all crops, even in well-established crops, women's role, rights, and responsibilities differ according to a geographic and cultural context. Even in India, if you go to the, you know, uh, in different, different states, you have different ways. And even in the hillsides and the plains, there are differences in Indian culture. Because in the hills, women are more empowered than, than in the plains. That, that is in general. So we can see the different uh, things by geography, by culture, by all the things. So we have to be very careful uh, while starting these things, while you know, presenting something on the role of women in the value chain. 
But I don't say this is very static. This is dynamic and it's changing over time and there is a positive change. We all know about that. And women are mostly engaged in small and medium scale production. This is not only in Binley value chain. This is also in other business cases. Other business cases like they are owning the small and micro enterprises more, but they are not owning mostly the bigger enterprises because it may be because of their traditional role or it may be because of their financial gap. The financial access gap is still high in developing countries. It is almost like 9% between men and women. That is what the financial reports of the you know, international financial report tells us. And the other one is like decision zone. When to sell, how much to sell, where to sell, are still, you know, that is mostly, I should not say almost, but mostly taken by me. And there are few studies on the participation and role of women and different levels of millets values in our team. Yeah, and this is not only the case of because you know gender is often is spoken uh, in the lines, but the in-depth study on how and you know what way the women are participating and what their roles are, you know, it is eight on the study topic, I should say. But why it is really important in our case, why we should focus as an ICBA or as a as an international institution, why we should focus. And why we need to understand the role of women in the immediate value chain? Because women's economic empowerment are central to developing inclusive food system. And food system is the, is the basic thing we want to change now. Food system, our existing food system is the thing that has you know, different implications, negative implications to natural resource management, climate change issues, and food security. Because if, even if we can take the case of India, one of the, you know, you know, agricultural country exporting a lot of crops outside. But when you take the case of India and compare with the other countries in, in the case of global hunger index, it is still lagging behind the, the, its neighbors also. So this is how we see like, you know, the production alone is not the issue that feed you, that secure you, but inclusive food system is one of the crucial issue that makes you food secure and that ensure your you know, livelihoods in the system. That's why we want to focus on that one. We need to understand this. And the second is women play major roles in several things, agricultural producers, farm managers, processors, traders, but at different levels, we need to understand the levels are different. And then this is the issue that makes them, you know, very much, you know, vulnerable in some cases, even though their contribution to the production, their contribution to the whole crop system is really very high. And the third one is like, even the data shows that women comprise 37% of the old rural agriculture environment and up to 40% in low income countries. If you take the case of India, it's more than 70%. So we have different risks on this one. But why we need to understand this women's participation separately because they still have differential access to resources compared to men, such as essential services, knowledge and information, uh, technology dissemination, land issues, and credit options. I have already told you they have the financial gap is almost more than 9%. This is the international level. But this gap may be higher in some of the countries where we have, you know, higher production of millet. We have to study on that one. And we also have, sorry, the differences in, you know, their time management and markets due to household chores and other obligations, the productive systems, and as well as the productive systems within the same country. So these are the issues we need to be careful of. And up to now, you know, we are just thinking by one crop. But why we need to understand, you know, the role of women in the millet value chain, we need to have a certain framework, certain, you know, conceptual framework that we are trying to employ now, because we are, we are writing something now, we are, you know, developing something on millets and other marginalized crops. As, as an employee of ICBA, we need to think on that one. Okay, what are the conceptual framework for analyzing millet value chains? Up to now, most of the things are gender blind, and that limits the ability 
our ability as a researcher, uh, as a you know, as a as a you know, staff in the research systems, our ability to make links between role of women and the functioning of value chain. Because we always say, okay, if there is production, it will automatically go into the supply chains and we'll have a bigger spillover effect. But that's not the case. To to have the spillover effects to the downstream of the society or the underprivileged people, there should be some supporting systems from the government, there should be some policy, and there should be some way to look at that one. How do we measure that? How do we feel that you know our conceptual or theoretical framework to have this thing occur in practice? That is what we, we are we are looking at. And the second is like the role of women in millet value chains should be viewed in the in the perspective of the food systems, not only millet. What about the other crops? And then why other crops are you know, uh, you know, yeah, are growing much faster than this one? And what are the roles? Because it may be the markets, it may be you know the ways of the workers, it may be the, you know other systems. Because women work in the different levels, like producers, ways workers, processors, traders, and consumers at different. Uh, as a difference in society. So we need to be careful on this one because these are the things we, we have often overlooked. Yeah, these are the things. And then we also have in the framework now, okay, we have the, in the concept of inequality. Yeah, inequality in the access to resources and several other things. But these things should be acknowledged while we discuss about you know, the participation of women on this one. This is what we have started now in all of the projects in IGWA. And then and that, that is also the case in the role of, you know, women in the millet value chain when we started this one. And finally, what we, we say is like, if we, if we think on, think on that one, we have started this in all, all the projects because we have the market dimensions. That is one side because what uh, the you know, individual as a, as a woman or anybody needs to say. And then we have also the dynamics of gender-based constraints. And this is the framework what you know, the United Nations FAO is also you know, thinking on the same line. So we, we need to be careful on, okay. You know, when we talk about the market, it's not only about the production. The value chain goes from production to aggregations to processing and then distribution and then to the market. Market is the in one because the consumers are there, but we often looked at the supply side. This is what the mistakes of uh, what do we see uh, in all of the, you know, that's our past mistakes, I should say, which, because we always focused on the production, production, production. But is the production is in the right place or and then whatever we produce is waste. In some sense, if we don't you know, have very good or very efficient distribution system. So th this is what we need to be careful of. And that distribution system can you know, tell us how we explain the role of women, we explain the role of other people in the lower stratum of the society. We need to tell, we need to take care of these things. That's the first side. And the second, we also need like gender-based constraints. This is not only in the case of you know uh, women, it's also the case of men also, because how do they participate, how their roles are defined in the systems. And then when we talk about the you know role of uh, role or participation of women in millet chain systems, we are not only talking about access to productive resources, because sometimes you see there is participation, but there is a lack of power and agency. The power of agency is like, you are not able to utilize the, the role you are given to. And then that is what we need to be very careful and we need to support on that one, yeah. And next one is like, you, you, you see that one, in the, in the extended value chain perspective. It's the national enabling environment, whether there is some support in the prices, support in the you know, uh, markets uh, integration, support in all the things like infrastructure and these things, and also the creation of the local value chains and integrating that one into the national and global enabling environment or national other value chains. These are the issues uh, we have started thinking on. How do we manage these things and the service provision, and finance and the input provisions in all those things and see the millets roles on this one. But after all, what we see is like, we all have, we all agree that there is a positive trade 
Uh, that means the role of gender is increasing and role of women's participation or women's participation in each and all is really increasing right now. But still, the magnitude of their, you know, or the volume of their role is still smaller when we go to the bigger size of the market. That is what we need to study more and we need to integrate them into the system. So this is what uh, we usually have. Yeah. With this, I would like to say thank you very much to Selco Foundation and also Iqba. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jitenderji, for that insightful presentation on role of women and especially throwing light on how women, uh, you know, contribute majorly on production and processing activities and how, you know, how, how do we make it more, you know, ease of operation for women with, you know, providing solutions which are very relevant for women. Uh, thank you so much. But we have a, a specific question from one of our participants, Ilham. Uh, are these activities of women classified as gender, gen gender sensitive in this value chain? I mean, did you apply any gender sensitive value chain? Could we consider the millet crop contribute to women empowerment index in agriculture? Uh, five dimension of empowerment is what they mean. I request you to uh, respond to this question. Meanwhile, we have Rucha from Selco Foundation, a senior analyst uh, who will be presenting us on enabling millet-based entrepreneurship through clean energy-driven solutions. Okay, thank you very much for the very interesting question. I really agree on that one. Yeah, we all agree that you know millet is more relevant and more you know gender uh, women's crop. We all agree on that one. But still, what I see is like we need to look this one into the you know greater framework because what label it is really giving uh, or you know the power to the women. And then what label, uh, you know, their participation is. We need to think in that way because we are all looking not only in one craft at the, at the, at the whole sum because our approach is to give like, you know, better livelihood and to address the climate change. So we need, if we need to address that one and then see the role of women in some of the crafts value chain, we need to look at that way at what level they are participating and their participation is really, you know, with power and agency or not. And then if they are, you know, they are in the same format as we have them in rice or wheat value chains, because this, this, these are established value chains for rice, wheat and other things. So we need to be careful on this one. And while, you know, we have applied this one, we are trying now to apply that one in QNOA because we have data for that one now. And maybe next year in some of the things we will we'll also apply for millet in, in that case. So this would be one of the way we are we are learning now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jitinderji. I hope uh, the question has been answered and uh, thank you so much for that insightful presentation. Now I request uh, uh, Ms. Ruchali Mai to take over the presentation. Thank you, Supriya. Am I audible? Yes, yes, Ruch. Okay. So uh, hello everyone. Uh, today I'll be talking about you know uh, DRE based um, you know solutions that Selco has kind of you know uh, worked on. And uh, today's presentation I'll be covering uh, some of the case studies on implementations and the experiences from the field. A few problem statements and how does Selco Foundation really you know target a problem statement uh, across the millet value chain and you know kind of focus and work on that. And then I'll sort of come across. Uh, you know, uh, take you through some of the innovation scale and capacity building initiatives of Selco Foundation. Um, so we started, so Selco Foundation started its work on millets uh, close to a decade ago, where the need basically was identified. Uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, partners who were kind of, you know, contacting us to look at this value chain in particular, especially, you know, in the uh, both east and west part of India, where, you know, Selco has been working. And the uh, the kind of pull that we had, uh, we kind of, you know, jumped in, into uh, this. Uh, so while there are a lot of problems, you know, uh, that are and the opportunities that exist in the entire millet value chain, right from cultivation, processing and consumption, Selco Foundation uh, kind of, you know, uh, zoomed in on the processing side of the, you know, uh, millet value chain, saying that there's a role that, you know, decentralized renewable energy can play. And there's something with where other stakeholders are working on, 
like especially on the cultivation and the consumption side. So might as well work on the processing side of it. So even as Jitendra ji had mentioned in his previous presentation on, you know, how the processing bit is normally done by women. So that was also like, you know, one of the factors for us to consider, you know, working in the processing uh, side of it. And uh, so since it's been like, you know, uh, uh, quite a few uh, years since we have been working in the millets, we have, you know, created this uh, solutions portal. So while we have a lot of problem statement, what we want you to kind of, you know, also look at are the solutions that we can, you know, use in the sector. And uh, this website is right now uh, hosted by Selco Foundation, where uh, we have uh, currently uh, manufacturers across India uh, and we have kind of you know tested many of these solutions uh, and I'll just try and you know show you some work that we have you know done on the millet processing side of it so there is uh, you know uh, pre on farm and post harvesting both solutions you will be able to see I'll take you through the post harvest processing solutions and primary solutions mo uh, mostly so this has like a repository of all the technology vendors that are right now available in India who are manufacturing millet processing units. Now, uh, the idea is that, you know, end users or organizations that are working in millets, if you, if you are interested in, you know, accessing uh, information regarding the, you know, technical capacities or you want to kind of understand, you know, how does it actually work on uh, solar so for that, what we have done is uh, for each of the, you know, solutions, we have kind of highlighted the price, uh, who is the vendor, and you can actually make an inquiry directly to the vendor. So, you know, Selco Foundation is not really a middleman in this case, but like you can, you know, directly approach the vendor through this. this there's also like a video for each technology and, you know, the, uh, the way in which the technology looks. Along with that, we have product specifications, indicative solar design, and, you know, some details about the enterprise. And the link of the, uh, you know, vendor is also mentioned here. So the idea really is that, you know, while uh, Selco is trying to work on, you know, technology uh, uh, improvement, efficiency improvement, the idea is that anywhere in India or abroad, if you are able to kind of, um, you know, have one-shot portal, which kind of hosts all the renewable energy based uh, you know uh, solutions for millets this is uh, you know a, a place where you can actually go in um coming back to the presentation uh, so this uh, i'll also send you the link of this uh, solutions portal it also has other solutions uh, especially you know on farm solutions which are applicable across agricultural you know other value chains as well uh next i want to cover some case studies of the millet processing uh, solutions that we have done um so um Just a second, my screen is. Yeah. Uh, Supriya, is my screen visible? Yes, yes, Rich. Yeah. yeah. So the first case that I want to cover is of an individual. So the idea is that, you know, we have worked not only with individuals, but we have, you know, kind of looked at the different ownership types, right? What makes most, uh, you know, business sense? And is there an opportunity for individuals as well as groups to actually take up millet processing as a livelihood itself? So uh, the first case is like, you know, of a, uh, of a software engineer based, uh, you know, some, a few hours, uh, from the city of Bangalore and um, what we what his main issue was you know was unreliable energy at his place where there were frequent power cuts and he wanted to kind of you know, uh, uh, you know run a sustainable social enterprise and you know this person eats millets like you know uh, since the past decade or so and has been like you know uh, so we've been working with him for the last 
uh, four five years, and you know, gradually we started uh, to actually um, you know also bring him to other entrepreneurs as a trainer. So right now he is kind of empaneled, uh, you know, as a trainer. We have done multiple interventions at the site. The first one was you know millet processing unit. He has taken his uh, production from like two uh, hundred kgs per day to now uh, about two tons per day. So that's how his journey has been. He's definitely upgraded, uh, you know, the processing uh, of 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 the unit. The second case was, you know, in terms of, you know, why is decentralization important? So uh, there were community members, uh, and this case is of a pulverizer, right? So uh, they use uh, the pulverizer for milling raki, which is a millet, and uh, they had to cover uh, long distances to actually get the processing done. So while we are able to, you know, uh, talk about the processing cost, the idea is that, you know, even the transaction costs for the poor need to be reduced. And uh, this individual entrepreneur basically started this pulverize, uh, pulverizer, uh, you know, uh, business. And through that, the savings were, you know, kind of multifold, right? One is that she is earning income uh, out of the you know, unit. Then there are villagers who don't have to travel a certain distance to get the pulverize, uh, pulverizing services, right? So in all, uh, the entire village kind of gets benefited economically because of the value addition that is there. Uh, the third case is of, you know, an NGO where, again, there was an SHG who was, or SHG is something called a self-help group, which is like a bunch of women who come together to kind of start a business uh, uh, or so. And in this case, again, it, it the solution that we have, you know, uh, focused on was a, a pulverizer, a flour mill. And it was essentially it, uh, it, the eastern part of India where it was kind of carried out manually by the villagers and it was kind of taking a lot of time. And again, the drudgery and the transaction costs were uh, kind of um, reduced significantly. The fourth case is of, uh, of a larger institution, almost a FPO um, uh, FPO as well. So the idea was that there was an NGO called Sitlingi Organic Farmers Association working in uh, in in this uh, you know place in Tamil Nadu, uh, state of India, uh, and they had been working on consumption for the past few decades. Now the thing was uh, they were facing a lot of problems in terms of market linkages and uh, also in terms of um, you know processing. So I, what I'll do is I'll pause here and show you a video that we had, uh, you know, actually shot uh, a few years back um, on, on this case itself. So the first bit, uh, what they talk about is, you know, the um, how they, uh, you know, were facing, uh, you know, nutrition deficiencies in the region because of excess rice and because of millets, uh, you know, uh, the villagers have been, uh, you know, uh, more healthy as compared to, uh, you know, the earlier times. Uh, Rucha, I think there is an issue with the audio. Uh, what I'll suggest is if we can share this, uh, uh, post the webinar with all the audiences, we can actually share the link. Um, okay. And also, yeah, so I would request you to wrap up the session in a few minutes and I request yeah. the participants to stay on until the closing remarks and we will have a way forward discussion as well as a group photo of the session. Uh, yeah, please go on. Okay. So yeah, I'll I'll just share the screen with uh, as in the uh, video link with you uh, after the session gets over. Uh, I'll quickly just touch upon you know how do we kind of zoom in on certain problem statements. So 
at each of the nodal points within the you know millet value chain uh, the idea is that you know selco will kind of shortlist problems depending on the magnitude of the problem right so if there is high drudgery involved if there are women who are kind of operating the machine so there is high drudgery the costs are uh, high in terms of the technology that's where we kind of you know zoom in on the problem the scale of problems also so is that problem felt by a lot of people we then kind of take it up is there an opportunity to create impact using renewable energy and then you know are there champions in the uh, you know in the value chain who can actually focus on you know uh, on that particular solution so these are some of the you know criteria for us to kind of you know shortlist a problem statement and work on uh, on that end to end um while a lot of uh, you know work of selco has been on you know post harvest processing uh, we have also mapped out you know right from the pre production stage right what are the kind of solutions and you will also find it on the solutions portal where you know we have uh, you know listed down vendors who are actually manufacturing an efficient uh, uh, you know uh, machines uh, from millets and uh, majority of our work in millets specifically has been on the post harvest processing right and i'll just touch upon a, a few cases how selco has kind of you know worked on innovation um so th the idea is that you know we work with technology enterprises and champion end users who are kind of willing to take the risk to to kind of test the solution at their sites uh, knowing that there might be losses or failures in certain cases right so with vendors we try and you know sometimes incubate them we test their uh, solutions we we co develop uh, you know some of the machinery uh, you know components with them we also have facilitated you know development of autocad versions of the technologies in the past so this has been primarily with technology enterprises and champion end users so the in innovation programs kind of focus on that while the scale programs also have technology enterprises where you know uh, we kind of you know take them to different uh, you know programs or sessions uh, and kind of enhance their market linkages we also kind of you know sometimes support them with gap financing the certification of machineries uh, all of that and along with that uh, obviously we have the ngo partners or the training institutions where we are actually you know working with uh, with some institutes to develop uh, you know training modules for capacity building of of the ngos as well both on the processing side and on uh, you know uh, bookkeeping accounting all of that aspects as well um so in terms of ngos that that has been more or less the work in terms of government we are kind of you know unlocking subsidies since in india right now there are a lot of schemes focused on food processing and particularly for millets both from a state and a uh, you know central government perspective we are unlocking uh subsidies uh we are also kind of you know working on building capacity of uh, bankers to kind of look at a uh, you know better financing product for millet based solutions and we are also implementing uh, model centers with uh, you know certain government partners um we have recently started working on uh, you know capacity building in full force where the idea is that you know while there is technology but you know you need mentorship you need training and you need uh, technical skills to actually operate the machine and you know uh, if in case there are any um, uh, you know details that enterprises require there has to be one one stop platform that provides them all so that has been the endeavor uh, and we do facilitate like five day four day residential and experiential training programs for like unit operators or so people who are operating the machine people who are managing the entire unit people who are you know wanting to just understand end to end of millet business so we do you know uh, provide trainings for that and um, yeah as in that is it thank you for uh, for the for listening patiently uh, i know it's been uh, 20 minutes thank you
Thank you so much, Rucha, for that presentation on the entire work of Selco Foundation. Uh, for further details, uh, we have shared the solutions portal uh, link on the uh, chat box. And uh, if anyone is interested to go on in detail, we can actually, uh, you know, uh, get in touch with us, any of us, and write back to us uh, to know more about, uh, you know, will it work at uh, Selco Foundation as well as on IQBA. Uh, there are a few more questions in the chat box, but because of the time issues, we are just uh, going on to the closing remarks. Uh, 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 we will definitely respond to the questions and I request, uh, uh, you know, scientists from ICPA to respond to those questions because it's specific to, uh, you know, genetics and plant breeding. So I request uh, uh, Noor to take note of those questions and we will definitely get back to the audiences on the questions raised. Now I request uh, Ms. Noor to uh, uh, provide the closing remarks and then, uh, uh, you know, provide the next steps uh, for this uh, webinar. Thank you. Uh, Noor, can I request you to uh, yeah. provide us the closing remarks? Yeah. Oh, that's my hardest for oh, Can you see me now? Yes, okay. yes, Noor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Supriya. Actually, as we conclude this webinar, I would like to thank you all for joining us today. And I would like also to extend the regards of IGBA's Director General, Dr. Tarifa Zahabi, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today due to prior work travel commitments. Also, a very special thanks to the IGBA team and Salco Foundation colleagues for the excellent presentation and very informative presentation. Uh, moving forward, I believe that discussions today have laid a very strong foundation for further collaboration between IGBA and Salco Foundation, as well as with other partners and stakeholders in advancing the millet value chain. And I would like to take a moment to reflect on the key insights shared today, including the importance of promoting millet as a climate smart and nutritious crop with a low carbon footprint, also focusing on the adoption aspect of the millet value chain. In addition to the role of technology throughout the value chain and the importance of improved financing mechanisms for better harvesting, processing, and also marketing. Additionally, we highlighted um, the, importance, the important role that government and incentives can play in this, uh, in this regard. Uh, we also discussed the role of capacity development, not only for farmers, but also for processors and small enterprises, as well as the important, importance of empowering women in the millet value chain. As we have seen, uh, women are already playing a very important role in the mil in millet value chain in India. I would like also to highlight one of the most important collaborations between IGBA and SARCO since we signed the MOU, which I believe Dr. Serini has already uh, highlighted and mentioned, is the Millet Demo Farm at IGBA's research station in the UAE, which was launched last year during COP28. This initiative has successfully showcased the whole value chain of millet, from seeds production at IGBA's gene bank to cultivation on our millet farm, to processing with Selco's solar-powered machines, and finally to consumption where we prepared and enjoyed some delicious millet-based recipes. So building on this successful initiative and webinar today, we look forward to deepening our collective commitment to exploring further innovative solutions in sustainable agriculture, uh, food and nutrition security, women empowerment, as well as fostering entrepreneurship within the millet-based value chain. Uh, with this, I would like to conclude and thank you all again for your contributions. We hope this webinar marks the beginning of continued dialogue and action. And before we all leave and close, I would like to ask you all to turn on your camera so we can take a group photo. So please, if you can all turn on your cameras. Dr. RK, yes. Yes. You are ready, Ahmad. Okay. okay, great. Thank you all again, and uh, we wish you a very nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks so much, everyone. That was very insightful conversation today. Thanks, Noor. Thanks, everyone from ECPA. Thank, Thank, so Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.